Potato is the most widely grown vegetable crop in the world. It is essential to cuisines and cultures around the globe. But in the US, the primary potato being grown, the most widely grown potato is Russet Burbank, which is well over 100 years old. And you can compare this to crops like maize, where new varieties are released and adopted every year. Part of what slows down potato breeding and the adoption of new varieties is that potato is a highly heterozygous clonal autotetraploid, especially in the US and Europe. And this slows down breeding because it keeps us from using many of the technologies that have been really important to generating genetic gain in uh, comparable staple crops. So for example, you basically can't inbreed an autopolyploid. Uh, it takes seven generations of selfing to get to a functionally entirely homozygous maize line. It takes 30 plus generations of selfing to get to a functionally entirely homozygous potato line. And so we just can't do it. The same thing goes for integration for, of new traits, right? Because if you integress into something that isn't an inbred line, what you get is not just the trait you want, not just your disease resistance or your abiotic stress resistance, you get all of the other wild stuff in the genome. And so um, integration takes a long time and we don't have the same possibility to use the variety of wild alleles that exist and could be beneficial. Also, no traits are fixed in potato. When you cross two potatoes at the beginning of a breeding cycle, you get immense segregation for all kinds of traits. You get segregation for tuber color, for tuber shape, for skin finish. You even get segregation for whether or not it makes tubers most of the time. Um, and so this is really non-ideal. And one of the ways that we as a global potato breeding community are thinking about fixing this is to convert potato from an autotetraploid to a diploid. And this would be exciting because once you convert potato to a diploid crop, you can inbreed. And then once you have inbreed, bread lines, you can cross to make hybrids and take advantage of heterosis and hybrid vigor. And so the first question that might come to mind is, don't we generally increase ploidy in domesticated species to increase yield, to increase fruit size or tuber size or organ size? And that's true. But as we've started breeding diploid potatoes, we found that while on average, tetraploid potatoes are bigger than diploid potatoes, the range of phenotypes for diploids is larger than the distribution of phenotypes for tetraploids. And so some diploids outcompete all of the tetraploids. And so this is a really promising avenue forward for potato breeding. Another thing that's really exciting about this is that it allows us in some parts of the world, especially in parts of the world without a certified seed system, to move away from potato as a clonal crop. So uh, to grow a potato, you plant a tuber in the ground. And um, this works, but it's challenging for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you do a cross with maize, for instance, you wind up with 200 seeds per year or so. If you, from one potato plant, you get eh, maybe 10 tubers, which means that 
that's a much smaller ability to increase um, your seed. So increasing seed is slower. Also, uh, sexual reproduction clears out uh, diseases from systems. And everything loves potatoes, uh, viruses, fungi, insects, nematodes. And so, and anytime a potato gets a virus or a fungus, uh, that is passed on to the next generation through clones because it doesn't have the same option to um, go through sexual reproduction and clean out the genome. So this means that uh, we, once a virus is introduced to a potato line, it just has it until you go through like extensive antiviral tissue culture. And this leads to major yield losses, especially in places in the world without a certified seed system. If we have inbred lines that are stable and we're making hybrids, then we can grow potato from true seed, which is smaller. It's easier to transport. It's easy. You can produce it in larger numbers and it's less likely to carry viruses. Um, so diploid potato breeding is a really powerful tool to both speed up the potato breeding process and allow breeders to respond to changes in environment and consumer demand faster and to simplify the seed system in parts of the world where that's a problem which results in yield loss. Thank you.